Jack Schmidt having a few problems. But there he is, all but about uh, five inches. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, do I like to run up here. When preparing for a formal event, the first thing that usually comes to mind is the ensemble. Suit, tie or bow tie, crisp white shirt, cufflinks and a pair of polished plain toe Oxford shoes. But in my vision, no formal outfit is complete without a dress watch. The ideal dress watch is often understated, small enough not to overpower the wrist and free from excessive complications. In some cases, it doesn't even have a second hand, just clean, minimal elegance. For many, the ultimate dress watch is the Cartier tank. It's iconic, sophisticated and endlessly chic. But for others, just like me, the hefty price tag and the limited occasions to wear such a timepiece can make it a difficult purchase to justify. After all, do you really want to drop several thousand dollars on a watch that will only see the light of day a few times a year? As I've mentioned before, my own fascination with the Cartier tank was cured by the release of Casio's brilliant alternative, the Casio tank. Not only does it mirror the clean lines and unisex elegance of a medium-sized Cartier tank, but it also lets you hold on to those three extra grand, which I personally don't have. And with two days shipping, there's none of the waiting list frustration that often comes with the real deal. At around $100, you get a lot of watch for your money. Sure, the stock strap isn't exactly the epitomal luxury. It will do it for a while, but let's be honest, you're going to want to upgrade. And here comes into play the Forstner Beads of Rise bracelet. And this is something that you don't usually see, a bracelet that costs as much as the actual watch. But if I can't afford 3 grand for a real Cartier tank, I can mimic the same aesthetics and the same feeling that you get with a real Cartier tank, pairing a Casio tank and Forstner Beads of Rice with 9 rows. And like I've just said, not only does this bracelet elevate the Casio Tank's dressy vibe, but it transforms a $100 watch into something that truly feels like a Cartier alternative. In a previous review, I sang the praises of the Forstner Molo J Jubilee as part of my Seiko SRPD combo, praising its comfort and quality. And Forstner's pedigree is undeniable. They produced in the past OEM bracelets for luxury brands like JLC and Omega, and let's not forget that their comfort bracelets were a NASA favorite. Worn by astronauts on space missions, the legacy speaks for itself as Forstner bracelets have been worn both inside spaceships and on spacewalks, thanks to their adjustability over spacesuits. And just like I said in my last review, Forstner didn't just stop at space-ready models, They've also embraced more refined, dressier designs, and one standout is the Beads of Rice bracelet. The version that I own features 9 rows for a truly luxurious aesthetic, although Forstner offers a 7-row version, which is an older model that still retains the same timeless vibe. And maybe you're wondering why I make this review. I'm not paid or endorsed by this brand. I think that the build quality is exceptional and it needs to be shared with you guys. It features solid links and straight end bars. And yeah, Forstner, it's all about bringing vintage design back into the modern world. And the straight end bars harken back to the mid 20th century style, reminiscent of when Jacoby Bender supplied Longines with their famous beads of rice bracelets. This bracelet brings a certain vintage charm while seamlessly blending with the simplicity of modernism. The small links create a texture that from a distance almost resembles a thicker mesh bracelet. It's a piece that looks both retro and contemporary, a nod to the past but with the craftsmanship and materials that make it perfectly suited for today. And one of the highlights of this bracelet is the solid construction. 
Each link is robust, yet fluid, allowing for a comfortable fit that conforms to the wrist without feeling stiff or rigid. Actually, I've never tried any Beads of Rice bracelet before, but Forstner has managed to capture that delicate balance between style and function with this one, and it's a bracelet that is both visually striking and genuinely comfortable to wear. Whether you're dressing for a black tie event or just elevating your daily outfit, the Beads of Rise adds a touch of class without compromising on wearability. The adjustment of it was quite easily done, as in every box, just like I said in my last video, Forzner provides a flat head screwdriver for the screws that hold the links together. And if your wrist expands during the day, they also paired this one, just like the Model G, with a clasp with six micro adjustment holes that cover any situation reminiscent from their Comfit line that could be worn on the wrist and on the spacesuit during the spacewalk without needing proper tools to adjust it. As part of the Universal Straight Bar collection, the Beats of Rise model has a great versatility when it comes to pairing it with other watches that have a round case. Though, for my preference, I like to have end links on my watches and I see the straight bars more suitable for rectangle or square shaped cases. This bracelet can also be fitted on other case shapes if you want that vintage dress vibe with no end links. And I usually wear watches that fall into dress casual category and during the weekend field watches. And when I really want to test my limits, I pair my activity with some classic G-Shocks. But this type of bracelet is in the right place when it comes to dress style watches and ladies watches. But for field or adventure watches could be a bit too much, making them look too delicate for such jobs. I wouldn't have any concern taking this bracelet on an adventure, as it is robustly built and feels solid on my wrist. And just like I said on my review with the Seiko SNXS79, I love this kind of clasp, and the clasp on paper might sound like a fragile and cheaply made, but seeing it from a different perspective and having it on my wrist, it is surprisingly robust and apart from other press clasps that I've seen over the years, it has no play and no sound. And I see why Forstner used a pressed instead of a milled one. Firstly, the bracelet is not heavy, but quite light because it has to be worn on dress watches that sometimes can be quartz and light to be worn as comfortable as possible and throwing a milled clasp on such delicate construction not only that would make the clasp thicker and chunky, but also would make it feel imbalanced. So it doesn't feel like a coast cutting measure, but more like a well thought design feature. And usually a bracelet, if it's too elegant, falls into the ladies category. And usually a watch like this and a bracelet like this, if they are too elegant, they fall into the ladies category. But this combo, as elegant and dressy as it is, matches perfectly a men's or a ladies outfit, making it a great unisex accessory depending on what watch you are planning to wear it on. I personally would wear it on my Casio Tang, as it makes the whole watch and bracelet combo feel balanced. And as I said in my last review, with a bracelet like this, you combine two big brands with huge history behind, and as in my case, you can cure your obsession for a Cartier Tang. And of course, if you have it, you can keep that money in your pocket, getting the 20th mid-century dress style look for under 250 US dollars, without needing to spend 3 grand on it. Now, upon a closer inspection on their website, in the future I would also try their iconic Comfit bracelet. Unfortunately, I don't have an Omega Speedmaster to pair it with, but from my saw on other reviews, they can also be paired with almost anything. But until then, if you reached this far, thank you for watching this review, and just like you're used to, I always leave a link in the description of the video that leads to the actual website where I bought the watch or the bracelet from. And remember, I will never review something that I've never owned. And watches are just my passion and I don't make these reviews as any form of income. It's just my passion for watches, bracelets and of course, movies. My name is Ed and you watched another episode of Resaga. Cheers!